everyone. Um, I am Sharonda Richardson. I go by the name also Eccentric. That is my stage name. That is my pseudonym. That is <laughs> everything I encompass outside of my home and in the art world. So you can call me E or Eccentric, or you can call me Shay or Sharonda. It doesn't really matter to me. Today, we will be focusing on imagery as it relates to poetry. Um, and using that as self-awareness and to learn more about ourselves. I do the activities with you so that it is organic, so that I can always learn more about myself in the moment, and so that I can also participate in the things that I have you to do. So I want to start with an icebreaker. Um, and basically, I'm going to say an object. And what I want you to do is answer the questions based on that object. So. I may some, say something like trophy, and I ask you, how does it make you feel? What does a trophy feel like? Uh, what does it smell like? Does it have a smell? Maybe not. And that's how we create textures in poems, and that's how we get to know ourselves by diving deeper into how objects and things make us feel. Before we go into that, I'll just introduce myself. I am an author, a poet, a playwright. I am a mother of six. I am from Florida, South Florida, small town called Pompano. Uh, and basically, I am setting you up for performance poetry or AKA slam poetry, which is what I do. We actually have a competition coming up in June in Louisville, Kentucky called Southern Fried uh, Poetry Festival. It's a five day poetry conference and festival. Uh, it's Southern United States, Southeast really, uh, maybe a little bit of Midwest and over 200 poets are gonna come together. We're gonna compete, have some workshops and just hang out and have a good time. It's been two years since they hosted the festival because of the pandemic. So everybody is really excited to start back competing. I also created my own poetry festival called the Ezra 36 Slam Poetry Festival. It happens the second week in December of every single year here in Pompano. We will be five years old. We created this festival because we saw a need here in our community. And I thought, what better place to host a festival than Pompano? And we have this amazing beach, right? You guys have great beaches too, so <laughs> I don't want to brag too much. Uh, <laughs> so um, that's kind of what I do. Um, I thought I wanted to be a performer in my career path. I did it for about two years and decided that I didn't really like traveling so much and being alone and away from home so much. So then that led me to what I do now, which is basically creating programming for my nonprofit, as well as for different organizations, um, including government organizations as well. We uh, primarily cater to the underserved population. I do work in prisons um, and I just love working with um, everybody really and making the arts accessible because the arts can change your life if you let it, if you use it as a vehicle and a catalyst to drive change and to really get to know yourself, it can really change your life. Because once we get to know ourselves, we can decide the parts that we want to keep and the parts that we don't want to keep that don't serve us as a person in our communities. So with that being said, um, I'll do a poem at some point <laughs> in this Zoom, but uh, let's kick off the activity. Um, please feel free to chime in. Sharonda, I wanted to let them know too, because uh, again, guys, we had a little uh, disconnect there when I was trying to do us live at the same time, trying to record. I'm not sure what happened, a little glitch, you know, how technology is. So again, I wanted to welcome everyone that's here. This is part of Art at Home series. This is part of the St. Cory Foundation of uh, grant, a care grant that's made this possible. Uh, this is our second year of doing the art at home, the virtual series here. And uh, my name is Jessica Parker White, I'm the education coordinator. And we're so excited to have Sharonda Eccentric Richardson on the line with us to start off January um, of the new year um, and with her wonderful slam poetry. And we're also really excited too, because Sharonda will be coming back here. She'll actually be arriving here on island. So she'll be here in person for two weeks in March as part of our artist in residence. Uh, so she will be here um, March, I believe it's 
the uh, 6th to the 21st. Yes, yeah, so March 6th to the 21st. So definitely everyone make sure that you're looking out to, um, to find out more information and we'll let the schools know too when Sharonda actually comes here on island for some live workshops. But for today, we get her on Zoom here, which we're really excited um, to get started. So thank you so much, Sharonda. Oh, no problem. Thank you for the introduction. So guys, I'm going to spin object uh, and you are going to tell me your responses. So I like to start light and we're going to start with the rainbow. What does the rainbow feel like to you? And that's anybody who's online can answer. What does a rainbow feel like to you? When you see a rainbow, what do you feel? What does it make you feel? Um, I guess it makes me feel happy, I guess. And okay. Like, colorful, so I guess it, it, like, it gives maybe like artistic vibes, maybe. Okay. You like trying to draw a rainbow or something. Kiara, anything? Does the rainbow, how does it make you feel? Um, I guess it makes me want to draw it, like sketch it down. Okay. And does the rainbow have a texture to you? If you if you could touch it, what do you think it will feel like? <laughs> They're like, what? <laughs> so this helps with imagery, right? And and building. So poems have texture, which means a poem is just a story, right? It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And that's all a poem is. It's a story. And a lot of times when we're doing poetry, uh, particular to slam poetry, because it is meant to be performed and not read, we have to create textures. We have to do a lot of showing in our performances because people can't see those words. So um, I'd imagine it will feel maybe like a cloud. It will be soft, right? Um, on the ends when you're kind of reaching the end of those, maybe the lines will be a bit more sturdier. Maybe they bend um, to the unwelcome presence of us touching it. Uh, so if you could think of a texture of a rainbow, what do you think of? Jessica, you could participate. Oh, good. I was going to say, it, uh, your first question about the rainbow, the first thing I always do is like when I, especially in the morning and you got your cup of coffee in your hand and you open up your house and you see that rainbow is you grab your cell phone and take a picture. And it just always yeah. puts a smile on my face. So I'm always wanting to take pictures. I've got a whole category of just rainbow <laughs> pictures because it always makes me happy. And as far as the texture goes, I would say something very soft, um, very soft and fluffy when I think of a rainbow. And what about a rock? That's a rock. What does a rock feel like? We know it's hard, right? Uh, we know it's solid. Um, what are some other words that we can describe the texture of the rock? Sometimes they're smooth. Sometimes they're rough. What else? And remember, poetry is just as big as you can think. Right? And then adding your own story and touch to it, which is what we'll get into when it's time for the activity. Anybody a rock? What does it feel like to you? We have somebody that's iPad that's on. It looks like you're trying to connect audio to us. If, you're, uh, if your audio is not working, iPad, I'm not sure your name because uh, it's not popping up. Feel free just to type it in the chat. Yes, so again, I have the I chat. I have up. the chat on too, so I can I can let Sharonda know. Again, iPad, if you're having difficulties with the internet, feel free to connect that way. So uh, ladies that are with us, what do you think about a rock? A rock. What does it feel like? Um, a rock, I feel. What does it feel like? Or what does it make you feel like? Um, both. What does it feel like? And what does it make you feel, right? We can go very, uh, you could go very literal. Or you can definitely go figuratively something that is not palpable that makes you feel like. Mm. Um, well, to me, like, well, a rock feels, it feels hard, of course, and bumpy. And sometimes it could be sharp. Um, and then like, I feel like, like, you know, in the mind kind of sense, I feel like a rock is kind of like a, a place like a block. You know, it's like blocking mm. you. Road. Yes. And if you have a huge rock, it kind of blocks you. Or even if a small pebble, you may fall over it, or, you know, you could maybe get into your foot or something, you know? So, yes. 
Yes. Um, yeah. You ever heard the expressions of a rock between a rock and a hard place? That's kind of. What, have you heard the expression between a rock and a hard place? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. So when you said that, that made me think about that, right? Uh, so if we're talking about something that's not palpable, a rock to me feels like a stopping point, uh, possibly a, a brick wall, um, mm -hmm. a, a change of direction because, you know, it's hard to get through rock. Um, and the texture, like you said, I like the word uh, sharp, which I didn't initially think of, uh, which can be dangerous right? Which can also be used um, outside of danger. It could be used to help us in hunting or catching things or escaping things. Yeah. Um, and this is just to help you, you know, think of ways that maybe you didn't think about these objects before. So we're going to, uh, so now that we kind of got under our belt, what we're doing, which is imagery today, we're going to do a color poem. That means you're going to select the color and you are going to build a poem around that color. So my favorite color is yellow, uh, particularly a mustard, <laughs> a mustard yellow. Um, so if I were to start this poem, which I am going to write with you, it could be something like um, yellow, uh, the color of sunflowers that brighten up people's days help people when they're sick. It feels like the morning dew, softness. It feels like being planted in soil and purpose. So I want you, I don't know if you caught that, but I went from a very literal way to talk about a sunflower and then transfer that over to talking about it to me from that one color. So your job is to first pick a color, is to first pick a color that you are going to write about. If you don't have a favorite, that's fine. If you don't wanna use your favorite, that's fine. If you know the history of some colors, that's cool. Just choose a color for me. And when you have the color, say, got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Perfect. Cool. So now that you have your color, now that you have your color, I want you to write down seven descriptions of that color that is specifically related to you. Why did you choose the color? How does the color make you feel? What does the color feel like? What is the texture of the color? Yellow is like bright, right? Blue and purple are regal. Uh, sometimes black is really dark if we're talking about horror. But at nighttime, stars come out. If it's blue, color of the ocean, color of the water, how does that color make you feel? What is the texture of that color? If you could taste that color, does it have a taste? Does it um, make your mouth swell in a smile? So seven things, it can be single words. They do not have to be a sentence right now. It can be single words about that color. And I am going to grab my phone because I am going to do it with you. And this is a color identity poem. So it's very important that the color relate to you uh, specifically and not what it may mean to society. How does it make you feel? What does it remind you of? Why did you choose the color? Those type of things when you're writing down about this color and I am going to join you. And I'll give you a few minutes to get those words in order. If you get them before that time is up, just let me know and we will move on. And give me just a second. I am going to turn on my fan. All right, how are we doing? I'm not finished yet.
I'm finished. Okay. Sharonda, you said seven, correct? Seven yes. words or phrases, okay? So, yes. Okay. I've got to edit mine out because I added too many, but I've got it, it. No, keep it. Don't edit. Keep Don't it. edit. Keep it. Okay. Keep it. Because remember, you can take these things back home with you. Okay? So I'm here to um, get you going, get you thinking outside of your normal boxes, getting you to see yourself as you normally may not or not just don't have the time to. A lot of times life just happens and the evaluations that we need to do for ourselves just don't happen because we get caught in routine. So if you find you have more, that's great. That means you just have stuff to work with when you get home. <laughs> Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Leonis, how are you coming along? Um, I have one more. Okay. <laughs> I have a question. Does homely is homely a word? Like home homely? It can be a word. Uh, my dad is homely. Um, I have heard the word used before. Now, I have never checked out if it was an actual word because I just accepted it as such. But I've definitely heard like a, a homely or a homey feel. Yes. I don't know. Jessica, have you ever heard of that word? Anybody use that word? Yes. I'm going to give it to you right now. Uh, homely is normally an unattractive in appearance is, uh, is what, mm -hmm. how it's um, used. Um, so if you're a homely person, then you're a kind of an unattractive, kind of plain person. Which is, yeah, which is so strange because again, right, we talk about how words have different connotations to them and different meanings depending on how you use them. And that's what's great about poetry. You can totally take this word <laughs> and turn it into something else because it applies to you, because it is your story, because it is about who you are and not necessarily about who society sees you as. So I don't Which want to, is, yeah. It's interesting because I'm word. actually clicking on it and it says, so that is the uh, North American uh, expression there on an unattractive plain person. But in the British context, it is a place of surroundings, simple, Ill, but cozy and comfortable, um, comfortable as in one's home, yeah. a modern hotel with a homely atmosphere. So you have two versions there you can choose That's from. That's what we're talking about. Okay, homely. sounds good. <laughs> Um, how do you how spell it? H O M E L Y? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So, did that complete your list? Yes. Okay, all right. So, now we have seven words. Now we're going to start building our poem. By the end of this session, you should be more aware of yourself um, and you should have learned something new about yourself. So I want you guys to really push yourself to be honest uh, and open with yourself. Uh, a lot of times we do that with other people, but it's very hard to do with ourselves. And that's OK, because sometimes poetry makes that easier. OK, so now that we have our seven words. What I want you to do is connect that word to yourself if you have not. So example, my first word, I chose the color purple, by the way. My first word, a word or term was my mother. Uh, and now I am going to take the time to connect purple my mother and to myself if that makes sense does everybody understand so you're going to take your word and you're going to connect it to yourself so uh example for for mine i don't want to use mine because i want to actually think about it so i said at first my example was my color was yellow and then i said sunflower 
right? And then I said, sunflower planted firm in soil, making people smile. Doesn't have to rhyme, doesn't have to be a complete sentence. It just needs to connect you to the word. Why did you choose that word from that color? And what does that mean for you? So again, so yellow, sun, if that's the word you say, I put the yellow was my color, sun was my word. How I will connect that to myself is I brighten up people day. I provide food enrichment for the earth. I allow things to grow. I have a gravitational pull that nobody can escape and everybody wants to experience me on cold nights. You see how I'm connecting that word, that object, and then translating it into what it means to me. Is that clear? Yeah. Yes? Yes. Kira? Yes. Okay. So take some time to uh, do that with your words. If you have any questions, I'm here. Um, and then once we do that, we'll move to the, the last step and then we can share. So I'm going to grab my phone again and I'm, if I'm looking down, guys, I'm working. I have a question. Yes. Do all of this, like, do they have to rhyme? No, no, there, you don't have to rhyme. It can be free verse. It could be short sentences. It can be long sentences. It does have no rhyme or reason. But uh, it just, just have to um, relate to you. Yes, in the color that you chose. Okay. Yeah. And don't feel like you have to repeat the color. Um, I want you to be as organic as possible. So that means you only want to say the color in the beginning and then start feeding yourself into this poem. And what does it mean to you? That's completely fine. If you want to repeat the color before every line, that's completely fine. Remember, this is about what feels natural and organic for you. And I about, have... yes, go ahead, Leonice. Okay. Um, so my question was, do I have to put the color green in my... Um... In my sentence? No. Nope. Okay. You do not have to have the color in your sentence. Um, if the color is not in the body of your poem, you could just say it in the beginning of the poem so that we at least know what color you're drawing from, but it does not have to be inside of your sentence. Okay. Don't overthink it. Try to just ease yourself into what you're saying. Remember, you can have something that's very tangible. And you can have intangibles. You can have something palpable, something that is not palpable, something that we can see, something we cannot see. So don't box yourself. That's the good thing about your story. It's your story. Nobody can tell it better than you. So embrace that.
Um, I'm finished. She said they were done. I think Sharon oh. somebody said they, they were finished. Oh. Yeah, I said I was finished. Okay. Give us just a moment to catch up with you. <laughs> She's like, I know who I is <laughs> and what this color does for me. <laughs> Okay, I'm done. How are we doing, Jessica and Leonice? She's like, this is harder than I think because you're probably overthinking it. <laughs> you're trying I to write been a, a student in a while. Thank you, Sharonda. Uh huh. I know, and you're probably trying in your mind write this poem, right? Instead of realizing that honestly, there's so many forms of poetry, man. So poetry is literally exists in whatever realm we want. It looks like sometimes I just write free write and I look up and I'm like, oh, 
well, that feels like, like a poem. <laughs> so don't try to think over, overthink it and think, you know, what you're accustomed to seeing. This is about us, about you. So that's probably all you know. She's like, ooh, I'm going to say this good metaphor and it's going to be good. No. <laughs> Yeah, how you doing? I'm finished. How how uh, Jessica, were you finished or you need more time? Oh yeah, no, I, I think I've got I'm I'm good. I'm at a good spot. How how was this exercise for you? How did it make you feel? Uh what did it make you feel internal? Did you learn something new about yourself? Anybody want to share before we share our Creation. Did you pick um, up? Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. So my word is refreshing, and my code is green. The refreshing okay. of life connects me to the to nature. I feel that the flowers tickling my toes as I drift away from the harsh reality of the world. Green. That's my poem. What was your word? Was there, so you just chose one word and that was refreshing, correct? Yeah, yeah. Why did you choose refreshing? Ref, refreshing. Uh, why did you feel it connected to you, who you are as a person? Oh well, ref, I feel like green. I have green all over my room. It's not. It's one of my favorite colors. Um. So and green to me, it makes me feel refreshed, and it's a color of nature. So. And nature is refreshing. Me personally, I live all like around a lot of nature and stuff. So, so you get a lot of green. Yeah. <laughs> and and if somebody called you green, if I said, Lenny, she looked green today, would you take that as a compliment or would you take that as an insult? Well, I feel like it depends on the person that's saying it, you know. Okay, so context matters. Yeah. Okay. I'll go. My color was purple. I did not use yellow because, again, it's my favorite color and I wanted to push my boundaries. I wanted to see what the color purple uh, brought out in me. I wanted to see how it connected who I was. So I went with a different color and this is what I came up with. And, 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 and just, okay, I'm just going to read. <laughs> Purple. It's my mother's favorite color, so I hold it close because she is my favorite girl. It's deep, like history. Feels like civil rights movements and choir robes. I remember dressing in choir robes, deep like me. It smells royal, like my lineage. I come from kings and queens, leading with dignity and grace. Sorry, I'm going to call it. Eating with dignity and grace, it's mysterious. Or call me an introvert when I can't be ignored. You know, although I can't be ignored once I go out, I'm a poet. So as much as I want to be mysterious as this color, most often I cannot be. I create awe, pretty, even when I don't feel like it. It feels creative, determined to exist. I'm determined to exist. I share these same sentiments, and when I don't appear radiant, I am always reminded that longevity is a marathon. And on the days when I don't feel needed, I'm reminded that purple is always somebody's favorite color. I am always somebody's first choice. I am always somebody's favorite girl. As I, as, as I am, I am here always since the beginning of time, just waiting to be explored. That was, that was, that was my poem from Purple. <laughs> wow, Sharonda, that was amazing. I think we all agree. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes. It, it, it took, it took a while, I think longer to really connect the words that I had written on the paper uh, because this activity, it's really supposed to be introspective. Um, so for me, when I was talking about Purple, some of the lines is, we, we don't, I, well, personally, I don't always feel like somebody's first choice, but if you ask 10 people what's their favorite color, nine times out of 10, somebody, at least one of those persons is going to say purple. It's very, very popular color. So that's kind of why I think I led that way because 
you know, I don't always feel like somebody's first choice, but the truth is we are always somebody's choice. <laughs> so thank you. Well, that's not fair, Taronda, because you went before me. <laughs> and that's okay. Trust me. You're going to do fine. Okay. So <laughs> I, I will share mine. Mine was aqua blue. Oh, very specific. Yes, I was very specific. <laughs> okay. Aqu aqua blue, Mother Ocean surrounds me as I soak and then submerge, letting go, relax, uh, floating. Transparent, I can see hidden creatures starting from coral, moving quickly. Reminder, life is short. I mm. hear laughter. I hear laughter of children playing at the edge of the water, waves moving between their legs. I submerge and hear the sand and shells dancing. The sun is setting, aqua blue turns darker. The day is done, cold and wet. I emerge smiling. Nice. You had some, some buzzwords in there for me. You said transparent. Are you a transparent person or are you normally kind of more mysterious like that ocean? Ooh, that's a hard one. I think it depends on the situations and, and the depth of things. But I, I think in general, I would say I'm pretty, uh, um, I'm a pretty happy person. I'm a pretty transparent, a pretty bubbly personality. So nice. And then I think I caught the word cold. And in Lenny's, I'm going to have you reread yours in just a second. So I heard the word cold. Um, and I think sometimes we write, right? Do you can so your arc is blue. Sometimes the ocean is cold. Well, I don't know. Does your ocean get cold? <laughs> or is it always warm? Well, it, it's that's a funny thing because definitely on island, if you've lived here long enough, this is starting to become the time of year where uh, people don't get in the water as much. So um, I definitely feel, though, at the end of the day, if you're there at sunset and you're getting out, you will definitely feel that, that coldness as the, the air is hitting you. Yes. And what made you go with aqua blue? That's just my favorite color. It's the color that I, I have um, in parts of my house. That was the colors of my bridesmaids dresses. It just always puts a smile on my face because it does remind me of the ocean. Huh. Okay. That's interesting. So you went with the ocean to describe, but you have it in your house. You could have pulled from what the color in your house made you feel, makes you feel like when you get home after a long day work, the bridesmaids dresses were blue. Uh, so I found that interesting. I think that's a lot more diving into this aqua blue and how it applies to you um, that you can do here, especially being that it's in your house because our homes are supposed to be our safe haven. So when you come home after a long day's work and you see this aqua blue, what does that feel like? Relaxation? What does that feel like? You know, safety because you know you're within your confines. So I think you got a lot to do there. So I need to dig deeper and go back and, and add some more. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Kira, am I saying your name right? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you want to share? Yeah. Okay. Pastel purple, bright and noticeable. Smells of lavender fields and fresh macaroons. Days fade to black. The sun sets with purple. The cold breeze flows through the window and makes me feel calm. For this is why that's my favorite color. It, can you repeat the macaroons line for me? Uh... Smells of lavender fields and fresh macaroons. Fields of fresh macaroons. That's a cookie, right? The, yeah, it's kind of a cookie. Okay. And uh, was that your first word or did you have to think about the word macaroon? Not really. I was like, what, what do I really like that has lavender? And I was like, the time we went away to, I, I don't remember if it was DC or something. Mm -hmm. But we went and they had this like really um, cute French macaroon store. <laughs> and they had lavender macarons. And I was like, this is my favorite now. Oh, nice. Nice. I, I immediately think uh, sweet. I think um, I, the, the only, my sister is a baker. So she made some macarons. That was my first time trying them. And they were very rich. <laughs> I couldn't eat a lot of them because of how sweet it was, right? And so when you said it, I'm like, oh, she, she is a texture of rich and sweetness and depth that is savory. So I, I'm describing you like that, but I don't, <laughs> I don't know you, but that's what came to my mind 
when I heard the word macaroon, and that's the kind of the point, right? We use these words all the time, uh, or maybe even not all the time, but we never really think about how it translates to who we are as a person. Um, and that's kind of the point. I love that um, a word you use. It was very descriptive for me because I immediately was like, oh, she is very rich <laughs> and very sweet and, uh, you know, nice to be around. People love cookies. <laughs> if you ask my parents, they'd say, yes. if you ask my friends, they'd say no. Ah, okay. That's also interesting. I guess as far as adult, just like ask my boss mm -hmm. <laughs> and they'll say one thing, ask my kids and they'll say another thing. So we yeah. totally get yeah, we totally get that. Thank you so much. I loved it. Uh it was uh had a lot of texture. I think you described it really well in such a short period of time, uh, which for me um lets me know I think you're a lot. You're introspective, right? Uh, whether you chose those words on purpose or whether they just came to you, a lot of times our subconscious reveals a lot about ourselves through our writing. So it's cool. So if I, I sound like your parents, so sweet and rich, and then your friends are like, sweet, sweet where? She like, I don't know. <laughs> and then lavender is also, uh, a lot of people use lavender to sleep. Um, it's another way to maybe dive into it a little more if you wanted to. So it's calming, it's sweet, a sleeping, a effects. So that means around you, sometimes everybody needs that calming person around them. That person that is always that ground wired, for lack of a better term. So thank you for sharing. And then Leonis, can you share your poem one more time for me? Leonice, can you share? Are you? There you go. You want me to share it again? Okay. Yes. Okay. The refreshing taste of life connects me to nature. I feel the flowers tickling my toes as I drift away from the harsh reality of the world. Green. So after now, after hearing it again, and you're telling me that you um, live around a lot of greenery, um, do you I let the grass and the green that you're surrounded in your home kind of go through your feet? Do you spend time out there? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, so that was good. I like that. Uh, refreshing is always so necessary. People who are refreshing, generally, I find are like like a lot bubbly. Then I'm not necessarily like a naturally bubbly person. Um, I really am an introvert, even though you would not know it by my career choice. <laughs> so uh, refreshing, I feel like you will be a joy to be around, that you will be bubbly, that you would um, wrap around as to what it is to be reminded. I know nature kind of does that. When you're surrounded by nature, it's kind of a moment where you realize that the world is bigger than you, bigger than your problems, right? Bigger than the small things that you think sweat you. So um, I hope you dig more into what nature does for you and how you connect with this color as well. Um, I think I'm gonna end on a poem, if that's okay, Jessica. <laughs> and um, I'm going to read one that I've been working on rather than reciting one that I know. And it is indeed about sunflowers, but I think it fits perfectly because when I started writing this poem, um, we had a house fire in 2018 where we lost our home, our puppy, we lost a car. Um, and, you know, it made me really sad. And this was kind of probably my first poem writing um, about how I actually felt about that and who I had become. So anyways, sunflowers symbolize adoration, loyalty, and longevity. Much of the meaning of sunflower stems from its namesake, the sun itself. Sunflowers are known for being happy, making them the perfect gift to brighten up someone's day. My son is used to watering a sunflower. He's used to walking into a home and seeing its smile. He's even learned to appreciate the fact that it would die one day. He saw it sprouting up from my soul, embedded in the soles of my feet, growing from the roots of my hair because I have always planted those seeds. 
he is living proof. I live life in yellow. That's what he has come to love. He doesn't see them anymore. Ain't been no sun lately. Weeds are just a bit taller than my stem. I try to tell him that sometimes seeds take a while to grow, especially if they're buried too far beneath the surface. You only plant them an inch deep. And well, it feels like I'm six feet under. Trying to tell him that it's been a struggle. He says he understands. I watered him for nine months. So he'll continue to water me even when the harvest is bare. Even, even when the harvest is bare. Every day he takes a vase and he places it on a table so that I can find a place to rest. He doesn't know that I no longer have an interest in being bottled. I've been bottling up this pain for far too long. He asked me what's my favorite song so he can sing it to me every day. He heard that sunflowers need love too, somebody to brighten up their day. He kind of finds it ironic that they are to be cultivated during the month of April. That's your birthday month, he said. Sun rays are drying me out. Petals withering too fast. Told me that he hasn't heard my laugh in a while. My answer, I ain't had much reason to laugh in a while. It's wild out here in these fields, trying to stand upright when the rain is heavy, weighing you down. You know, flowers can die with too much water, drenches them until they can no longer carry their own weight. But he liked to say that by the time it's fully mature, they generally face the east against the sunlight. My sun lights up my life. So I let the sun beat on my face. And even on the cloudy days, you can't miss it. I can tell he misses it. The flower that I used to be. He's waiting for me to bloom again. The Lazarus effect. Bringing my bones back to life. Finding hope where there is none. So for my son, I stretch my stem upright. Rearrange my petals. Sway in the heat of the moment. I pick myself up. I fertilize my garden. Take care of me for his name's sake, my son. Beaming energy to my core. He just needs a little more patience, do a little more waiting, and he'll see my dawn emerging, shedding my dust, chest up to the sky. I found that twinkle in my clusters. So for him, I must up every bit of strength that I have so that when he waters his sunflower, it brings joy to him today. And that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So you can. Um, Thank you. <laughs> so you can use any object, guys. You can give it texture. You can give it a face. You can give it life to express and learn more about yourselves. Through this poem, I was like, yo, sometimes it's I got to get into therapy. Sometimes it's I got to open my windows and let some fresh air in. Sometimes it's nature. Sometimes it's macaroons. Sometimes it's the ocean. And so don't forget that the things that are surrounded by us are the biggest indicators to who we are and the parts of us we want to keep and the parts of those we don't want to keep. Poems have no rhyme. They have no reason. They're just your stories and nobody can tell it better than you. Thank you. Thank you, Sharonda. We're so excited to join you again tomorrow. Again, yes. this is part of Art at Home series. Uh, we're here for January with Sharonda Eccentric Richardson. And this is part one. We have part two tomorrow. Thank I'll you. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good afternoon. Uh, this is part two of the Art at Home series. My name is Jessica Parker White. I'm the education coordinator at CMC Arts um, out here in Fredericksburg. And we're so excited for the Art at Home series to be continued for 2022 um, because of support from St. Croix Foundation and the CARE Grant. Uh, today is again part two. We are here today with Sharonda eccentric Richardson all the way out from Florida. She is Zooming with us today for part two of this great conversation that we're having with poetry. And I was just commenting to our uh, students that are on. I don't know about them, but I was definitely thinking about my color poem mm -hmm. from last night, thinking of ways I could have reworked it, thinking about different imagery. Um, so the lesson definitely stuck with me, uh, Ms. Sharonda, and uh, we're looking forward to part two for today. So thank you again for joining us. Awesome. Thank you again for having me and coming back to hang out and do some poetry. Um, so again, my name is Sharonda Centric Richardson. I'm from Pompano Beach, Florida, and I'm a poet and all other things, lover of the arts, arts, equity, 
uh, activists and all of those things. So today we are going to focus on a few things uh, with self-awareness being our focus here in these two particular workshops. We always start with an icebreaker. Today's icebreaker is going to be alliterations. So basically a string of words that start with the same or sound the same uh, in one sentence. And the reason I like to start with this is because slam poetry or performance poetry is about being heard. And a lot of times being heard, it's just um, enunciating, speaking clearly, uh, speaking confidently in what you are saying. So the alliterations help us get our mouths in order. Sometimes I've been told I have a slur quite. I, I interlock a lot of my words together when I speak sometimes. I am being very cautious and conscious right now about it. So that's probably why I'm not doing it. But when I first got into slam, my first coach was like, you got to clean that up. Nobody is going to understand what you are saying if you say it like you're, you normally talk. And I'm like, well, this is the way I speak. What do you mean? And she's like, well, in performance poetry, you're going to be performing in front of a lot of people that are from a lot of different places. And because of those differences, the more we enunciate our words, the clearer we are, the more confident we are, it goes over well and people will understand a bit better. So we did alliteration which forced me to separate my words <laughs> uh, before I got into a poem. So we're going to try a few here together. Uh, we're going to have some of you say some once I say it in the beginning, and we'll work on that. And then uh, we are going to create our own alliterations with our names as an icebreaker, and then we'll get into our actual poetry activity. So with that being said... We're going to pull up my list of examples here. We're going to start with one that everybody may have heard. I'm not sure. Peter Piper picked a pail of pickled peppers. Uh, focus on using your entire mouth, right? Your teeth. There are some words you can't say without using your teeth, like a T. You always hit the top of your, if you just say, say, T, T. Some words you can say without your teeth, some words you can. That's why when people are missing their two front teeth, a lot of times they're, it comes out as like men because they don't have that buffer to, to project and enunciate their words. And a lot of times we don't think how our teeth contribute <laughs> to the way we speak and the way people understand us in the same with your tongue. Some uh, letters get your tongue kind of stuck up there for a little bit like if you do that, if you do the T sound, you're going to realize that your tongue is kind of stuck up top before it goes down versus a B. B, bread, you don't use many. It's a pail of pickled peppers. Who wants to try that one? We're starting off easy here. Girls, anybody going to try to volunteer at least the I first remember, part? She heard. Rhonda, I'm sure we'll read it, read it with you if you're not familiar with the whole thing. Yes. Uh, Kira and Leonice, have you ever heard of this uh, saying, Peter Piper? Yes. Yes? Okay. <laughs> I, think it, I think it's um, Peter Piper picked what? Uh... <laughs> picked a <laughs> pail of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, a peck of pickled peppers, Peter Piper picked. If yes. Peter Piper <laughs> picked a peck of pickled pickle peppers, uh, how many peppers can I'm Peter gonna... Piper pick? Yeah. <laughs> so you see how, thank you, you knew the whole that thing. That was amazing. Yeah, I was trying to shortchange her. She's like, no, I know the whole thing. Uh, but you see how we got your tongue twisted when you were trying to go faster in those words, when you were trying yeah. to speak, yeah. And that's part of poetry, performance poetry, which I'll get into more on the island, is so much of that, especially when you're talking about public speaking and the nerves that are already there naturally, and then trying to say words that you may not say on a normal basis. You know, it's important to 
slow down, take your time, and to say those words with great enunciation. We're going to try another one. The big brown bear bled black blood. The big brown bear bled black blood. Now, the P and the B are very similar in the terms of the way we use our mouths, right? Uh, B and the P are kind of the same. So uh, this one should feel the same coming off of his tongue as Peter Piper did. The big brown bear bled black blood. I always almost messed up when I tried to speed it up. Uh, and then you want to try that one? The big brown bear bled black blood. The big brown bear what? Bled black blood. Okay. The big brown bear bled black blood. Say it again. The big black bear bled black blood. <laughs> The big black bear, the the big black bear, red black blood. blood. Uh huh. See, and Leonis is uh the black and the bear kind of roll together. Yeah. <laughs> yes. When, red, yes. Black. Exactly. So it's it's just this exercise and this icebreaker. It, it it's fun, right? When you're in person with a group of people and you're trying to say it in different pods, but it really does help you think about how much you enunciate, how uh, how clear you speak to people uh, when they are listening to you to try to minimize any ineffectiveness that comes with communication, right? Or comes with telling your story. I mentioned this yesterday about a poem literally just being a story because it has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And then you are the character. My poems, um, I wrote my first persona poem as a group piece. Uh, I was telling Miss Jessica that we had an adult poetry slam team and we wrote a group poem. It was my first persona poem, which is a poem from the perspective of an object. Um, and I'm necessarily not great at writing from different perspectives because I fully believe that um, our stories are our own stories to tell. And so if I tell other people's story, I'm always very cautious of how I tell those stories because they're not, they don't belong to me, but belong to the people who experience those things. So we wrote a poem on, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar, but um, 1963, um, the 16th Street bombing of, the, of a 16th Street church in Alabama, in Birmingham, Alabama, during the civil rights time, they bombed this church and they killed four little black girls in that church. Uh, so we wrote a poem from the perspective of the church, the bomb, and of the long stained glass window that survived the explosion. And um, I say that to say, when I'm doing that poem, I am making sure I am using all of my elements of my mouth so that people do not miss the message of that story, so that people do not miss what we intend for them to hear. So when you write poetry, sometimes it's for us to keep close, right? Like journaling and for our personal edification, and sometimes it's to share. So when you're sharing, just make sure you keep in mind that the big brown bear, see? The big brown bear bled black blood. Yeah, that's it. Yes. So Sharon, Sharonda, do you have um, a later on, can you share with us the link then for that powerful poem you were just describing to us? Is that recorded somewhere or a place that we could read it or find it on the internet? It is not. We just wrote it. Uh, we don't even know it yet, but I can share some other powerful persona poems for you. I also have a poem called Bonker that I can send over to you that that's a group piece, so you can see how that works. Bonker is a whole lot of words as well. Um, so I can send you over some examples, and then once we get that poem down and together, we could definitely share it. Um, it's going to be great. We're going to do one more. Uh, and, and just as a reminder, too, since this is part two, I do want to remind uh, the, the ladies that are on with us, as well as anybody that watches the video later on, that Ms. Richardson will be here um, at the museum. She's going to be here for two weeks. Um, as part of our artist in residency program from March the 6th 
to March the 21st uh, in 2022. So again, um, hopefully we'll get to hear some of these uh, poems uh, read out loud by her um, and performed, but also too that uh, we will be doing some more in-depth uh, poetry writing um, with yes. Ms. Richardson when she comes here for this workshop. So definitely be on the lookout. We'll be posting all that information on our social media as well as on our uh, at the schools too. So definitely uh, we hope that you ladies will be joining us for um, more poetry with um, Sharonda when that happens. Absolutely. I'm going to do some performing. We can do a night where I can do a feature. A feature is like a 20, 30 minute performance where I do talk bags and a bunch of poems and we have a great time. And then we're definitely going to get more into writing, more into performing with the students. And hopefully that uh, gives them new release. Uh, or if they're already into poetry, that gives them a new outlook on poetry. Um, and more confidence in transferable skills like public speaking, uh, such as um, crowd control, controlling your pace, your diction, controlling your emotions uh, that translate over to the real world. That's how I use the arts. Um, with my own children, and that's how I use it with everybody else, is making sure we're teaching skills that transfer over to no matter where you go, you can use these skills that you learn in the arts, okay? Yes, and then our last one, I think it's Sally Sell She, I'm gonna start over. Sally Shell, see, see? Sally Sell She Sell Yeah, you know that one, sure. Sure. Sally Sell She Shells by the seashore. So S, you use everything. S, you use teeth, you use jaw, you use tongue. Seashells. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. You want to try that one, Miss Jessica? I'll I know take that it. One. Okay, that's one I do know. Sally sells seashells <laughs> by the seashore. Yes. And it's so funny, right? We hear them before. And as soon as you start saying them, your brain is like, what? Hold on. There's too many S's together. Let me slow you down. And that's it. So quickly, before we get into the writing activity, I want you guys to do an alliteration with your name. It doesn't have to be long. It could be two words. So it could be, um, my, I'll probably use a centric. So centric is sites. So create one with your name. Uh, starting with your name and then create your own alliteration. And we won't spend a lot of time on it. And as always, I am working with you. Wait, can you please explain what we're doing again? Say it again. Can I please explain what we're doing again? You're just going to use your name to create your own alliteration, like the ones we've just been going through, uh, Sally. So you need to create something uh, that sounds similar or starts with the same letter okay. of your first name. And it doesn't have to be long. It's just it's quick to get your brain moving. Don't overthink it. Oh, no. I don't have any. Um, there's not much K words. <laughs> let me see. Let me see. Let me see. <laughs> the only ones I can think of is kite and kind. Or kind. Kite. Yeah, kite was the first word that came to my mind. But we have kin, uh, like K-I-N. Uh, so Kira has kin. Uh, we need more of this. So I was going to say, Kira has kin that like to fly kites. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I don't know what a K, uh, what's another K word? It can sound similar too. Because so I was going to say, uh, mm -hmm. I was going to say, Kiara kinds or something, Kiara something kite, something quiet. Because I was, I was exactly, like, Exactly, exactly. Because it's that sound or that beginning. It could be a, Kira flies kites by the cake stand. 
or okay. something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so remember, it can sound the same or it can start with the same letters too. I think I have a uh, Sharonda sings on Saturdays by the seashore. It's not like I think a lot of you have so many of the words uh, that start with the same. It's like jumble, jumble, liar. So, um, yeah, so it can sound the same uh, or it can start with the same letter. Do you have anything, Jessica? She's like. No, I'm still thinking. I'm still, I'm putting it together. And I was going to say for anybody that's uh, watching this too, I guess you could use your first name or you could use your last name. So yeah, you can, you, can use your first one, name. you can always do the other one. Or if you're a superhero, you can use your, your superhero name <laughs> or your artist name. And uh, again, this is just a quick activity to get your brain moving, to get the, the brain jogging, to uh, expand, you know, how you see yourself and how you put words together when it comes to uh, your name and who you are and how they all relate to each other. Leonice, how you doing? I'm finished. Oh, can we hear it? Sure. <laughs> um, Leonis licks lots of body pops. That's it. Oh! Leonice licks lots of lollipops. Woo! That's a lot of L's. <laughs> nailed it, though. She nailed it. Leonice licks lots of lollipops. So that L is another one that gets stuck at the roof of your tongue and that you'll notice pushes out from the teeth. Licks, licks. So it's weird when you first start noticing how the words escape your mouth but it's it's good because it allows you to work on your pacing it allows you to be more comfortable uh and to sound more confident as well Kira do we help you with anything or no nah, we still stuck on tight <laughs> I changed it to my last name <laughs> Ah, smart, smart, so I, smart. Yeah. So what, what'd you have? Lionel loves Labradoodles. Ah, she used her last name. Labradoodles. They're so cute. But they're so much work, those dogs, man. You guys have pets? Yes? Nice. I've got, I've got two little dogs, two little mm -hmm. Persian mutts. <laughs> we have... We have two turtles. Oh. Uh, my mom's boyfriend has a chihuahua that usually comes over a lot. <laughs> uh, we have a Maltese and a cat. Oh, you guys have a lot of things. <laughs> the Maltese I... and the cat is by my dad. The turtles are here and the dog is with my mom's boyfriend. Got you. Are the turtles uh, hard to upkeep? No, they're, <laughs> they're not. I am going to be building them in an uh, environment though. Oh, nice. Building environments. You know, my brain does not work in building anything but poems and words into stories. I suck at building anything else, I promise. <laughs> All right. I got mine too. I did do mine. Let's go. All right. Jessica is jolly and eating jam while just jumping off the pier. Woo. You got to repeat that one more time. All right, Jessica is jolly and eating jam while just jumping off the pier. Yeah, that's a good one. I was, trying to figure, I was trying to figure out something I could jump off of besides the pier, but I couldn't think of anything else that starts with J, so. No, I, I hear that it's a big attraction uh, on the island jumping off your pier. I plan on jumping off of it myself. Girls, have you jumped off the big dock? Maybe not yet. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's. Yeah, multiple times. You've done it. Okay, yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. And you're, you're still here with me. So that helps me feel better because I do plan on jumping off the big dock when I get there. <laughs> okay. So today, our exercise. Remember, these two workshops are connected with self awareness. So today, we are going to do, um, it's called My Life in Blank 
words. So you can insert any number that you like. I chose 22 because we are in 2022. Uh, and so you're going to write a poem that is your life in 22 words. You only have 22 words to tell me your life story. 22 words. That's it. So remember, before we start writing, be concise, be clear, be heard, be seen, and be confident. But remember, you got 22 words to do all of that, to tell us who you are in 22 words. There's no rhyme or reason. Uh, some poems are ABAB -A style, meaning the first line rhymes with the second line and keeps that pattern. Sometimes the first line rhymes with the third line and the second line rhymes with the fourth line. You can do a free verse. You can make it rhyme like Dr. Seuss. Whatever, this is a free write, but you got 22 words to tell us who you are. You're my life in 22 words. And that's what we're going to work on today. Um, and we'll use that once again here. If you guys want to share, you can share. Um, if not, you take it home and you look at that and you say, hmm, well, why did I choose those 22 words? Does it really tell the story I want it to tell? Does it have a beginning, a middle, and an end? Remember, that's what a poem is, a story, a beginning, a middle, and end. So even if you have 22 words, make sure that it is cohesive and that it is understandable. We got it. 22 words, your life. Um, what time is it? All right. We're going to, we'll see. We'll just start writing and we'll see how long it takes you guys to uh, narrow it down. If I could give you advice, I would possibly just say, don't think about the 22 words just yet. Maybe write uh, a free write consciously, you know, just let your pen write and then you can always trim it down. You can always edit something out or maybe I don't want them to notice or maybe that's not really important to my life now that I think about it. So try not to focus too hard on the 22 words. Um, if it helps, you can write numbers like one through 22. Maybe that'll help you. Uh, more like a word association, uh, which is basically you put a word and then the first word that comes to your mind after that word is a word that you can put in the second spot. So like if somebody will say to me, uh, if somebody said love, I will probably say God. And then if somebody said God, I would say faithful. If somebody said faithful, I would say Sharonda. If somebody said Sharonda, I would say poet. So sometimes it is easier to do poems like this by literally numbering one through 22 and stringing a word, a group of words together that just come from internal, you know, comes from inside of you if you can't figure out how to do so in paragraph form. Oh, wait, so we're starting from one word and branching out from that word? Um, you can do it how you want. I'm just giving you some examples. So oh, you okay. can yep, start with that one word and branch out. You can do a, a list and then use the word association method, which is how each word relates to the word before it. Or you can do a free write and then count, you know, make sure you got 22 words. So it's really up to you, just giving you some different ideas on how you can do this okay. poem in there. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to get to writing. And remember, this is about self-awareness. So be honest with yourself. There is no right. There is no wrong. Um, it is as much or as little as you want to share um, about your life in those 22 words.
How's it going? You guys look, well, Jessica looks hard at work. I can see you the other two ladies, but I imagine you look like you're hard at work. It's almost finished. Leonice, you, you, she's like, I'm finished. But you did tell me you wrote a little bit right before this. So <laughs> it'll be interesting to see if uh, what you write today kind of carry overs from yesterday. Kira, how's it going for you?
Carrie, you doing okay? She must be deep into thought right this second. <laughs> Right, got about three more minutes. All right, we got about another minute. You look like I just stressed you out. I'm so close and yet, ah. <laughs> so far. <laughs> yeah. You got it, you got it.
All right. How we doing, Jessica? We got it, kind of. That's cool. That's OK. This is a challenge. It's new. I kind of did two guys. So I'm going to share my first one and then we'll move to whoever wants to share theirs and then we'll go from there. Okay, so my first one, I did two. So I did one like the word association kind of way and then I did the other just more for free write. So the first one is, okay, so the title is My Life in 22 Words. Pain, trauma, house fire, no, pain, trauma, fires, babies, miscarriages, hope, home ownership, heartbreak, survive, accomplish goals, didn't give up on love or myself, breaking barriers, breaking free. My life in 22 words. <laughs> Who's next? Um, I'll go next. Okay. Let me find it. Hmm? Oh. Mine's is not as good as yours, but okay. Oh, stop it. Happy, sad, relaxed, tired, loved, honored, faithful, hardworking, lucky, hot, beautiful, restful, fighter, respectful, creative, thoughtful, helpful, kind, pretty, secretive, and tasteful. Can you start from the beginning for me again? Okay. Happy, sad, relaxed, tired, loved, honored, faithful, hardworking, lucky, hot, beautiful, restful, fighter, respectful, creative, thoughtful, helpful, kind, pretty, secretive, and tasteful. Nice. Such at the beginning. I think what, what stood out to me about your beginning was a lot of times as adults, we may overlook that kids get tired um, sometimes and that they get, you know, also experience happiness and sadness. Uh, so some of those words really stood out to me uh, because it reminds me, um, and I like to say that before they're my children, they are human beings. So thank you for being vulnerable and for reminding me that, yeah, kids get tired sometimes too, even though we as adults 
kind of forget that sometimes because we have so much going on. So thank you for sharing and for putting thought into this exercise. And um, you seem so much older than 14 <laughs> with, um, <laughs> with your writing and the way you are able to uh, be aware of yourself in that writing. So thank you. <laughs> I loved all the positive words that you had yes. for yourself too. So you have a, a very uh, good um, outlook and uh, very positive words. And, and that first few lines too, you had some words that were kind of like the tired plus, but you were also relaxed. So there was kind of exactly. this, a little struggle at the, the first um, the first line. So I thought that was interesting too. Yeah, that's why I was like, go back again because of the way she placed those. And you can see, and it's so strange because this is such a simple assignment, right? But it's it's difficult to 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 narrow that down to 22 words. But in, in Leonisa's form, you see the balance, right? Between happy, sad, tired, relaxed. You know what I mean? You see the intricate balance of life that we all live. And I that's why I was like, that's great uh, that you shared that with us because it just puts in perspective that um, before we're anybody's children or students or artists, we are all just living a shared human experience. And we all can relate to feeling both of those things at one time. It's like when I found out I was having twins, right? I had three miscarriages. And so to find out, you know, I was carrying two kids was happy, but at the same time, it was scary after losses. So it's um, refreshing, actually, that you share that. So thanks again. Who we got next? I'll go ahead and go next then. All right. So my life in 22 words. Adventurous, bold, caring. Two suitcases to St. Croix. Dedicated, Ooh. energetic, friendly. Oneself, open to one of a kind opportunities. Grateful, helpful, idealistic. You my life in 22 words. You killed it. So, so did we really move to St. Croix with 22 two suitcases and was like, I'm doing this? Uh, yes, ma'am. I'd never been here before. Got a job opportunity and came uh, sight unseen all by my lonesome. And uh, that was 17 years ago. So what? yes, and definitely uh, a life-changing experience to say the least. So I definitely wanted to add that in there. And um I kind of decided to play with, you know, the alphabetical order. So each word and then the, the two lines with the number two or the T and then one with Ooh, one. Look at so, you. Yes, thank nice. you. I have to say this is this is a great um, one, too. I have to say for uh, people before they get their birthdays. I was just thinking my birthday's coming up and uh, this is a this is a powerful poem for uh, people it, to about. That's amazing. Two suitcases. What, what was the other line with the two suitcases? Two St. Cases to St. Croix, and then oneself open to one of a kind opportunities. opportunities. Wow, you did a great job. And Thank uh, you. When I heard meeting. the two suitcases, uh, outside of the literal meaning, I, I just started thinking how much stuff, how, how, how much of our lives can fit in such small places. Um, I remember after our house fire, all of our stuff that was left was like two bins. That was it. That was all we could salvage, right? And uh, a line in one of the, in the poem that I wrote about it is that uh, your life fits inside of two bins. And that's what I thought about. I'm like, her life fit in these two suitcases to go for this amazing opportunity and then shared experiences. It's two bins trying to create opportunity. So I found that very, very interesting. You did a great job. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you for guiding us on this um, on this journey here with poetry. Absolutely. I'm not sure if Kira is still here. Kira, are you here with us? You want to share? Or did, maybe there was a little issue with the internet yeah. there. So that might be the problem there. But I will get her poem from her and make mm -hmm. sure that I share it with you. Um, 
Ms. Richardson. And I just again, thank you so much. This has been a great um, opportunity. We look forward to your arrival here for our artist in residency program in March and uh, taking us through these steps here um, on this uh, Thursday afternoon. We really appreciate it. And again, thanks to St. Croix Foundation and the CARE Grant um, for making this all possible. Thank you to having me. Thank you guys for joining me again. I can't wait to see you in March and turn it up. Get involved, get some physical bodies involved and moving and movement and making poetry come alive on the island. So I'll see you guys in March. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Bye Lenny. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh.